Okay, welcome back everyone. I'm gonna get the stock market technical analysis video out. The market just closed. I've been pretty busy all day, so I haven't been able to get this out, but we're gonna go through some things. There's some really interesting price action <clears throat> into the close today, so I wanna look at the weekly charts. We just closed out the month, so we'll take a look at that. We'll go through individual trade ideas that I've pointed out, and we'll wrap up there. Real quick, guys, I am going to do a live stream tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to basically go through any charts or trade ideas you want me to look at. That is going to be for the private membership group only. So if you're interested and you want to join in that live, live stream, join up on the private membership group. It's five bucks a month. I'm throwing out additional trade ideas. I'm giving you guys additional market insights in there, throwing up charts for you guys to look at. All of that is in the private membership group. <clears throat> link in the description below or there should be a join button next to the subscribe button unless you're on an iPhone because Apple's lock and key and that's how they operate so link in the description below for anybody on an iPhone all right that's for the private membership group live stream tomorrow again that's typically around 9 15 Pacific time uh, that's about when I do it 9 15 in the morning Pacific time all right, finally, if you guys are interested as I go along, if you're interested in kind of this skill set and how, how we put these charts together, how we put these trade ideas together, take my technical analysis course. That's gonna break, you, break down four to five different video concepts, going through all the different kind of trade setups, concepts that you wanna look at, and now, uh, technicals you wanna look at, and then it gives you a checklist on how to build really high probability trades. And then also I have a section on how to kind of manage risk and take good risk reward uh, ratio trade. So all of that is in the course. Link in the description below on that. It's priced affordable. Check it out if you're interested. All right, <clears throat> next up, let's get into the charts. Triple Qs, I wanna see the price action today. I won't go into the price action kind of today. So the June lows, we're looking at the daily chart here. The June lows really are right about here at 269.42. That's kind of your June lows. We started the rally, the bear market rally. I talked about the bear market rally uh, and we were long, you know, at least I was. Uh, I talked about going long, caught most of the long trade, started to get short right again, you know, right up in here. I think my short area was right in here, you know, added, I was building a short position right in here. Go back and look at some of those videos if you're interested and you'll see what I was looking at and talking about at the time around August, you know, anywhere from about August 8th up to about August 16th. Also, if you want uh, to have a fun laugh, go through and read the comments during those times. You'll see all kinds of uh, trolls and people talking about how, uh, you know, how the market's going on to all time new highs and blah, blah, blah. You know, basically I'm a perma, perma bear and things like that. And sure enough, you know, those people coughed up their money and we profited. So again, <clears throat> Now we're back down here at the lows. Now the bulls are thinking that this is a double bottom. That's what they've been thinking the whole time. I've heard Kramer come out and say that he thinks the June lows are going to hold. Well, okay, in the SPY, we'll look at that. But in the triple Qs, they were holding all week. But there we go. There's your breakdown right at the close. Let's go to the hourly. Last, really the last few minutes of the day, they came down and sold it down. Now, when I see that kind of price action, it's not usually my favorite to see it kind of at the end of the day, but a close is a close, and we did close below those lows. So that's bearish in, in, in itself. The bulls were not able to, to hold, the, hold it up, and so sure enough, breaking down. I think that sets us up for a pretty quick move to the downside on triple Qs. Our targets, again, you know, I kind of marked out this little mid target right here. I'm not really holding out for it. And in fact, I could delete it. Maybe we get a little reaction there about 252, but the target still remains right there. 238, 240, somewhere right in there. We should find some support. Um, and there also, if you look at it, we also have this downtrend line right, right here that maybe we slice right through that, hit that trend line and then recover inch a week or something like that. So again, I think we're going to have a pretty quick move down probably next week. And we'll look to be profiting on that. I went into the close today short, pretty much across the board on all of my trade ideas that I've talked about. 
So that is that. We've got new lows. Um, let's go down to the hourly chart. Still have that bullish divergence. Let me just double check. Um, still have some bullish divergence there on the RSI. Uh, that bullish divergence, however, has been taken out on the PPO. So no bullish divergence on the PPO. It was taken out just recently, but we do have it on the RSI. So again, I think we're going to take it out on the RSI as well. All right. I think the selling next week will likely take it out. And it's just extremely bearish. So I'm looking for that crash price action. I've been talking about it all week. All right. On the SPY, <clears throat> we'll go to the daily chart here. You'll see, there's your June lows right there uh, at about, oh, I gotta get rid of my little markup, <clears throat> at about uh, 362, we'll say, was your June lows. And we traded there pretty much all week. Today, they took it out. We go down to the hourly. You'll see it, they tried to hold it almost all, you know, well, they tried to hold it for a while, but pretty much all day it was taking it out selling closing down at the lows of the day uh, just bearish price action so in general you'll see here on the hourly chart here on the PPO no no uh, no bullish divergence clearly taken out still there on the RSI but again with it gone on the PPO and the price action looking like it is I suspect we just continue lower and take it out next week all right that's the hourly chart on the daily chart Price target for this one still remains right down here, 339.50, 339.30, somewhere right in there. Uh, that's your pre-COVID highs, so there should be a reaction there, and I think we're selling down to that. I think we get there next week. All right, it's just you know you can see we're already just we're almost there. You know we're really just working our way down there. Another, another what five percent down, and we're we're there. So I've been talking about these targets. Back to QQQ, I've been talking about these targets for quite a while. Um, <clears throat> honestly, when we shorted the market back in January, uh, I've been talking about these as kind of the, the the first leg down in the bear market. So looking for those and we're not, you know, we're, we're almost there now. I mean, on the triple Qs, I think we've got a 10% or so to go, um, about 12% and then on SPY about six or so. So that's it. So gold, gold bullion, when I go to that daily chart, 1680 still remains my kind of recovery area. I'm looking to see a recovery of that area. If we can't recover, I'm not particularly interested in gold. Um, I need to see that as a, as a uh, to signal that all this price action right here was a false breakdown slash uh, bear trap. So I need to see that. I don't see anything yet, so we'll move on. The gold miners, <coughs> You know, the gold was gold and the gold miners were relatively strong today. And it's, you know, we're seeing, I'm seeing some bullish price action in the miners and the market's continuing to sell off. So to me, it looks like they're going to, it looks like the Fed's going to pivot soon. Uh, the miners are kind of signaling that. They're probably front running that. Uh, I'm not interested again until I can see some, you know, a little bit more shape up in gold, but I'm gonna do some homework on these miners, maybe start fresh on these charts, see if I can find anything. Uh, I Again, these are probably, these look like one of the better areas to potentially go long here in the near future. We've got bullish divergences on the daily chart. <clears throat> and, you know, I'd like to see back to gold bullion, I'd like to see that recovery of that 1680. We get that, <clears throat> these miners look like they're gonna start shaping up. Looking at like Barrett Gold, <clears throat> kind of had a breakout let me grab the right tool um, little downtrend line here kind of had a breakout today slash buy signal it, they sold it you know it, it wasn't super impulsive i'm looking for newmont to, <clears throat> to show me the same thing this is the largest gold miner on the daily here's the downtrend line that i've got <clears throat> and we've got clear bullish divergence on both indicators i just need to see that buy signal slash breakout nice impulsive green day should signal should be the buy signal, and this is the leader. This is the big, the big boy in the miner. So we start getting bullish signs in this one. The rest should follow. Okay, I'll rattle off some of these trade ideas that I've talked about, and we'll wrap up, guys. AMD. So AMD. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just continuing. It's pretty much plunging straight down. You can see this was the thin zone. So once we entered, once we broke through this kind of the 73 area, 
um, you can see that, that was good support, all right? Support all through here, all these reactions. There's another one right there. So once we broke through, we're in this thin zone and I have it marked as green. There's no trading that took place in this zone. It was very, it, we just kind of ramped right through it right here. We should fall right to the bottom. And sure enough, that's exactly what's going on. So we're just heading straight down. Um, I don't think this will stop till we get down to about 59. We should tag 59, hit that, and that's the zone of support. Good support there, probably get a bounce. Okay, and it'll probably, look, you've also got this downward channel right now. So I think you run down, hit the 59 bounce, and then maybe you get a bounce up to the top of the channel like that. Probably reject there and head lower, but that's, you know, the near term trade, We 59 should hold the support, likely get a bounce there. Next up, uh, Qualcomm, very similar to, uh, to this one. And the thin zone that, well, this one doesn't really have a thin zone. It does have a gap to fill, but you can see heading straight down, the major area of support on this was 123. And you can see, look, resistance, support, 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 support right in here. And we broke down and boom, heading straight down. Now there's a little bit of reactions from back here uh, at that, so you maybe get a little bounce there at one about 110, 109.75, maybe a little bounce. Uh, but I don't know if we're gonna get that bounce because the market looks like it wants to crash down to those lower targets, triple Qs and stuff. So we might just slice right through this level and head right down to gap fill. See Qualcomm on the daily chart has a gap from way back here in July 20th. Uh, so I think, you know, that's my target right now is to fill that gap. It's about 93.75. Um, uh, yeah, and again, nothing, no change. Looks good. Apple, uh, I'm sure Apple, again, talked about this as, you know, I've talked about the fact that we're not going to see, the market's not going to be done selling till they take the general out back and shoot it. And that's Apple when it comes to tech and just the market in general. So sure enough, look at Apple. Look what Apple's doing. The, the selling's intensifying. It's been downward, but now it's almost just straight down. It's just kind of collapsing. So Apple in the last four days is almost down nine, ten percent, and that hurts everybody. You know, everybody owns Apple. Uh, I'm short Apple. It's profitable for anybody you know that's been with me on this channel. But uh, yeah, again, bigger picture. We look at Apple. Let's look at the weekly, and there's there's the target. So maybe we have a little bit. We're probably going to get some reactions down here at one thirty six seventy five. But you know, again, we could just drop right through here and head down to the next level of support, which is about one nineteen thirty eight. And obviously, this is your upward price channel on the weekly chart, going back to two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten. Basically, that's your bull market. We should head down to the bottom of that before getting a, any real meaningful reaction, okay? There might be weeks where we just kind of chop sideways and chop around, but I don't think we'll have any kind of a rally in Apple until we start hitting, you know, hit down here. So that's it. Apple looks good. More downside. First solar, no real change here. You can see they've just been chopping this thing. It's It's gone sideways for almost three weeks now. Uh, I still like it as a short, but we don't have any momentum to the downside. Maybe we get, and again, I think the way this one's going to work is we're going to gap down. So I think we gap down probably down below this 119.80 area and then just sell off pretty, pretty impulsively. Maybe that comes next week, but as of right now, I'm still short. We have negative divergence on both momentum indicators. We're trading up against this trend line resistance you can see here, all right? clear reaction there and yeah it's a, it's an area of resistance where you this is you know from my opinion where you want to short you want to short either at resistance or a break of support we've got negative divergences we just need to see the price action get going but again likely when this one gets going it's going to be too late to short it's going to gap down and you don't want to necessarily get short on a big gap down so i like it i'm staying short Run. Okay, so runs below the 200-day moving average. That's kind of the big takeaway from today. Again, it's been a short trade. Uh, I talked about it. Our targets, this gap fill, we should hit that next week, I would I would think, 2430-ish. Um, you can see here that basically 
We broke the 200 yesterday. Today, they made it look like it was going to recover. They were ramping it up. But again, it's a sell the rip stock. It's a it's a bearish, you know, everything's bearish here. So, you know, it, you know, I, I stay I stay short on these kinds of things. And sure enough, sold down, closing back below the 200. So, the 200 is is we're below the 200, and that's bearish. And close the week below the 200. Again, it's just all bearish. Starbucks again. So this one, um, you know, the support has been right here at 83. So I took half my position off on my short trade. Again, we got short um, right up, right up in here, I think, and then uh, took half the short trade off there at 83. It bounced, got a bounce off support. That makes sense. Bounced right into the 200, rejected. So the next move to the downside is we need to take out 83. I'll probably stick with the position I have, and then if we take out 83, I could always add to that position on a break of support. That's kind of the game plan right now. I don't see a whole lot of downside in this one, but um, yeah, you know, there could be a lot more. We'll, we'll see. Uh, the next area of support is about 80. So I think a break of 83 should bring us down to 80. And Tesla. So on Tesla, you'll see just another another red candle today closing lower. So that's kind of the key, the key takeaway on the daily chart is you had this daily uptrend right here. Okay, we had negative divergence that was building. So divergent high one, divergent high two. We broke trend, so there's your sell signal right there. All right, if you guys are interested in learning this, and you know, take my course. I break each, I break this down. You know, the way I'm running through it, I break it all down in the course. So link in the description below. Okay, there's your sell signal. A couple days of back testing, but again, wasn't able to really recover the trend line, and then boom, another rejection, big impulsive rejection right there. That's all I need to see right there. That price action with the divergences, that tells me Tesla's going lower. So, uh, and then today, just you can see, just they ramped it up and sold it down, closing down at the lows with a, a lower close than the previous day. So this rejection and then another confirming candle. It's, it's just all I need to see in terms of uh, weak price action. We got some support here on Tesla at 259. I don't know if it's gonna hold. We might break right through that. We'll see. Um, I'm looking for lower prices here. Again, if we're gonna crash in the market, we're gonna crash in these things too. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm looking for lower prices on this one. Everything looks good. I'm staying short on it. Um, XLV Healthcare. So the only, the only thing I wanna point out, this is a weekly chart we're looking at. And this is going all the way back to 2009. So I've got, you know, I've got a lot of the uh, the lows kind of marked out, and I've got this trend line. So there's there's a reaction there. There's another one right there. Another one right there. Now this is COVID, so a lot of these charts I kind of just mark that, just X that out as an outlier. It was such a flash move down, flash move up. It's not a nice steady re trend reaction. So kind of forced liquidation in there. So I just X that out. And then moving on, we got another tag there, another tag there. Several weeks along this you know, along this bull rally that started back in 2009 where we have have held this trend line. And as I zoom in, you can see we broke the trend line, had a sell signal. They made it look like it was gonna recover over the period of, you know, a couple months, but boom, clear rejection. So look, sell down, back test, down she goes for the last three weeks. So looks like healthcare is starting to roll over as well. And this has really been one of the areas of strength in this market, tech's already sold off quite a bit. Looks like healthcare's maybe gonna start to sell off now as well. So not really interested in shorting this one too much. These are kind of slow movers. They don't move quite as much, but I might dig through and find maybe some of the weakest stocks. Uh, but yeah, that, you know, again, looks like healthcare is uh, getting weak. So that's all I've got, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. We'll leave, uh, leave it at that. You guys, check out the course. Join the private group if you're interested, and I'll see you on the live stream tomorrow morning. Take care. Bye.